Welcome to the show. I have with me Doggy Dan. He is a dog trainer. He is based out of New Zealand. Now he's had a corporate career in the city until he made the decision to pursue his passion and work with dogs full time. He runs a successful online training program for dogs and their humans. Dan has written the book, What the Dog Taught Me About Being a Parent, published by Random House. Dan, welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, good to be here, Christina. Thanks for having me on. So I like to start the conversations talking about their first dogs, their first experiences with dogs. Ah, my first experience with dogs. I'm smiling because I was... I wouldn't be talking to you if it wasn't for my first dog named Peanut. Because my dog, my mum was terrified of dogs, really terrified. So we never had a dog as a child, as a children growing up. But I, I realized I always loved dogs. Um, when I went to a careers advisor to say, I'm tired of all the jobs I do and I can do these jobs, policeman, civil engineer, maths teacher, corporate wine sales manager. I can do these jobs, IT sales but I'm not passionate about them. And I want to find my passion before I leave this planet. And so she took me into a bit of a, almost a hypnotic state, to be honest. And in that, she went, look at this. Throughout your life, you've connected with dogs. Whether it was walking a lady named Mrs. Hackett's dogs. She had five Weimaranas, I realize mm. now. Um, or whether it was just remembering my dear dog, a dog called Sammy that I played with at holiday or Bunny that I played with at my grandparents. And that's when she said, you have a passion for dogs because all through your life you've connected with them. So my wife and I both said, well, as soon as we get our first house, we'll get a dog. And we got a dog named Peanut. And she was, she was one of those one in a thousand. Take a thousand dogs. She was special. I've had five dogs. I've worked with wow. thousands and thousands. And so I can honestly say she was very special. What was special about her? Was she your companion? Did she just kind of get you? Was there like an unspoken? Well, imagine getting a dog and not really knowing what to do. And, and then people just coming up to you saying, you have the best behaved dog in the world. That is my favorite dog. You've got the best dog in the world. And you just, I mean, your ego just, it's incredible. Yeah. Ego gets bigger and bigger. You think, yeah, I'm amazing. You get another dog and you realize, no, it wasn't you. It was the dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she was just, I mean, she had a couple of little things which had to be tweaked generally around food. She was a bit of a dribbler and she'd take your fingers off if you offered her a, a treat. But other than that, she was just had such a big heart. She loved people, loved dogs, loved cats. And she was obedient. She'd listen to you. She just wanted to please. But she was also a lot of fun. And, and this is where what I realized towards the end of her, well, yeah, towards the end of her life, she was also, I talk about it, and I talk about this um, with people, because I do a bit of uh, relationship work with my wife, and we talk about in a relationship, as a person, you need to have a big heart, but you can't just be love. You know, just love, love, love. If, you're, if you get pushed around all the time and you have no spine, it doesn't end so well. You go into business and you get pushed around and you just love everyone. And before you know it, you're not making any money. You're just a charity and you go broke. So you need to have a strong spine, a yes and a no. You need to be able to say no and have a big heart. Yeah. And Peanut had both. Oh. So the best example of it was, you know, I, I do my best to stay calm, but sometimes I get a bit frustrated. And there was one time I was obviously very frustrated about something. I've no idea what... And uh, I said to Peanut, come here. And she didn't. And I said, come here, come here, Peanut. And she didn't. And I said, come here now. I was shouting at her. <laughs> and I was really angry, to be honest. I was like, come here, how dare you disobey me? <laughs> I looked back and laughed. And she just looked at me and went, no. I, I, don't, I don't respond to that sort of energy. Yeah. Absolutely Ooh. no way. And she didn't. She yeah. didn't come. And I had to walk inside the house huffing and puffing and have a cup of tea and calm down. Uh -huh. And then said, come here. Said, no, no, I'll come. So that was my perfect introduction to a beautiful, my beautiful first dog, Peanut. And she worked with me on consults, you know. So she worked with thousands of dogs and showed she never once got in a fight, even though she worked with hundreds of aggressive dogs. And to see that firsthand is off the charts. Yeah. You know, to realize she could not only just feel the energy, but also calm many many aggressive dogs who 
you know, 90, 95% of other dogs would have ended up in a fight with, but she just held the ground. So her energy was kind of a, not a, not an aggressive pose, but it was a strong, yeah. loving pose. Sounds so like she, she was, was, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, she took up a full space, held herself strong and confident, but no threat. Just Sounds like she was a great leader and she taught. She taught people how to lead. She taught me how to lead, yeah, and other people and other dogs, yeah. Yeah. So. And that, that's, everybody should have a dog like that. Everybody should have a dog that just gets it, that just, the, dogs do teach us and we, we don't always they know do. that. <laughs> and, you know, I've had three, I've owned three dogs of my own since then. And my mother-in-law on our property has a, a dog. So we've had five dogs. Yet. And if I'm really honest, none of the other four are anywhere near as, as what's the word, whether it's easy or is it balanced as yeah. she was? Yeah. So they they are more extreme. So one mm -hmm. of the dogs I have now called Jack is what I'd call the king. Mm -hmm. But he's very intolerant of muppets, of idiots, of dogs ah. that come up, puppies that come up into his face. He doesn't give yeah. them many chances. Yeah. And that's his personality. And yeah. Little Ink is very, was, was very fearful. She became much better with the training I put in place. But uh, by nature, she was one of the most fearful dogs you'd ever meet. So that was her personality. They're all different. And yeah. Moses, just to give you a third example, he tries to be a leader. He wants to be the king, but <laughs> he sure ain't the king. He's, he should have been on a farm, to be honest. He'd be happy. They're just running around chasing sheep all day, you know. Yeah. So do you think dogs match our personalities or they're their own personality? A bit of both. That's a great question. I would say that... You know, I can pick in each of my dogs, I can pick a, a part of me, which I go, yeah, that's my, that's where I'm, I'm a bit like that in that sense. So you're... with Jack, I don't suffer fools gladly. I'm very <laughs> tolerant. I'm very, very, very tolerant, yeah. I like to think. And then there's yeah. just this point, I just almost snap. I'm like, no, I'm done. I'm absolutely yeah. done here. Yeah. And um, yeah, so, yeah. but they also pick up a lot of our energy as well. So over time, absolutely, they can mirror us. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that. Mm. And you're a trainer now and yeah. you work in a corporate job before going full time with dogs. Uh, was it the test that you did the you know, that found your strengths and the, the guidance counselor that you had? Was it that where you made the change into going full time with training dogs or how did that come about? Um, so those those jobs I listed before, I'd, I'd done all those jobs by the age of about 30. Civil engineer, policeman, math teacher, IT sales, wine sales manager, plus another five or ten. I just was, I think looking back, I was just looking for my passion. Yeah. I'm not a quitter. I couldn't yeah. work out why I qu kept quitting jobs. But I realize now it's because I was determined to find something I was so passionate about on planet Earth before I died. And I was selling wine, which was okay. Yeah. Red wine, palette of red, palette of yeah. white. And, yeah. But, and so when I went to see her, she... She made me realize I had a deep, deep love and a deep connection with animals. And I guess I always thought that was, everybody had that. But she made me get, realize, no, that's your gift. Yeah. Some people have a, a deep, deep gift with computer coding. Mm -hmm. They can remember the coding. Other people, you know, it's, it's understanding how the human body works, the inner workings of the cellular level of the biology of the... Doesn't really spin my wheels, but how to communicate with an animal or specifically a dog did so as soon as i realized that was a possible full-time job and she said yeah go for it it's absolutely everything you're saying your personality it matches i i'm the sort of person who jumps in i'm intense and i jumped in full full tilt with the plan of pretty much being where i am now which is uh having helped thousands and thousands of dogs yeah and so when you jumped into it, did you go for some training or was it something that was intuitive to you that you that you learned? Yeah, so my my approach was I, I want to have a balanced approach. I also want to be the best I can possibly be. So Tony Robbins, I don't know, you, you heard of Tony Robbins, the guru oh, yeah, most people have. Yeah. So Tony Robbins had this thing, don't reinvent the wheel. You don't have to come up with your own invention. So he said, success leaves clues. So whatever you're doing, whether you're a florist, you don't have to reinvent how to make bunches of flowers. Just study some of the best florists in the world. 
So I thought, well, I'll do that with the dog training. So I found the five best dog trainers in the world, the most successful ones I could find. And I, I have to admit, about three of them, I would say, I wasn't that actually that impressed with them. I kind of thought there's a bit wishy-washy and this feels, feels like there's no real substance to what they're doing. Two of them, though, I, I thought, I like these two. This, and so, the, you know, I'll say it. The, the lady I followed, um, based a lot of my work on, is a lady named Jan Fennell, the dog listener in the UK. The other person is a is a gentleman from the USA named Caesar Milan, which a lot yeah. of people have heard of. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> got the dog listener and the dog whisperer, and they probably have a think there's a lot of difference in how they work, and there is. But I saw a lot of similarity, and I found a lot of, um, I I took a lot from Caesar with the energetics, how he understood how to connect energetically with the dog, and the actual approach and methodology. I I was more um, inclined to follow Jam Fennell and the dog listener. So I. And I added a lot of other bits myself and, and um, yeah, put put my own kind of unique spin on it and uh, my own personality brought that through and uh, we ended up where we are. But yeah. no, <laughs> so it seems like you took Caesar and Jan and put those two together and found your own style that worked with dogs. And uh, so how did you start finding clients? What was that? Um, so finding clients was really just a case of, of just getting out there in every single way possible. And, you know, so I went around, I, I did the donut round to the vets. I did yeah. the old school laminating sheets and sticking them up at the parks. I did something called yellow pages, which doesn't exist now because it yeah. was when they had those, you know, three inch thick, big <laughs> booklets and mm -hmm. spent thousands and Google was just starting up and did yeah. Facebook and Google yeah. and word of mouth and yeah. joined dog clubs and went into speaking range. at the end of the day if you're if you're good at what you do if what you're doing works you tend to get um referrals and that was the secret to my success that people started saying chat to doggy dan doggy dan's yeah. great what he, he transformed my dog he's amazing it's the method it works what he does works for sure yeah. and i know i have worked with a lot of dogs you've worked with thousands of dogs and so you, you probably have a good baseline at the differences in dogs. Uh, what is one tip you would give anybody about dogs that maybe the general public just doesn't, doesn't know or think about or remember that's really useful? Well, I could give you a tip, but I'd prefer to start anyway with a, a sort of a philosophy. Um, how do we do this? The, the, this is the concept I'm really coming from, which summarizes the methodology that I believe in so strongly and deeply. If you think of, you know, I've got this book called What the Dogs Taught Me About Being a Parent, so we could apply it to parenting. But another way of looking at it is, is in school, because we've all been to school, we've all had teachers. And if you think of, there's different types of dog training out there. Some use treats, some tend to use more dominant shock collars and prong collars and stuff mm -hmm. and there's another way which is how it which is basically connecting very deeply with the dog understanding how their brain works how their mind works so that you sort of say to the dog trust me i know what i'm doing i love you you can trust me and i've got your best uh i've got my intention is to look after you and provide what's best for you and if you win that dog's mind it's incredible how many problems disappear and how easy training becomes. Once you start just bribing the dog with treats, <laughs> it's, it's not as clever as people think. I, I, I honestly, it's not, I, I don't believe anyway. Yeah. And uh, I'm not saying don't use treats, but there's something way smarter, way more important that needs to be put in place first. So my analogy is almost, if you walk into, and I've been a maths teacher in school, so I, I kind of know where I'm coming from with this. I've seen it. We all have. We've all been in schools. Picture those teachers who, you know, a group of children come in the classroom and the teacher says, pick up your pencils, turn to page 23 and start writing down what you, you know, answering the question. And all the, t all the kids just start doing it. Just a, and then those same children could, you know, they're all quiet. They do exactly what they're told. Those children leave that classroom, go down the corridor to another classroom where there's another teacher, and it might be a big, strong, strapping male who's shouting, and, and the kids are kind of all noisy, and he's shouting, and they're noisy, and no one's listening to him, and, you know. And the other classroom, the first classroom, may have been a small, petite, demure, 
older lady, very frail. But the, the man's shouting his head off, pick up your passes. Hey, you know, <laughs> you do. But they have, it's the same group of children. Do those children need more training? Well, not really, because in the first class, they responded. And if you understand what's going on there, you start to understand the power of of what I'm talking about here, which is being able to connect and win the dog's mind. Because that first teacher is just winning the, the children's mind. Yeah. They're trusting her. They know she's you know, got their best intentions at heart. And she's not using force. And she's certainly not using bribes and treats. Because you don't always have a treat with you. I know. I don't know how many times oh. I've been out walking and I have I have my poop bags. I don't have. I don't have a treat. <laughs> no. But it, it even goes further than that, you see. If if that if that first teacher had kind of treats on the desk, you know, whether it was a big pot of treats, it's not it's not the way that it really yeah. works. You know, I, the other analogy could be parenting that if all you needed as a parent was to choose the right bar of chocolate and have the right size pieces and use it, we wouldn't have all the parenting issues we have. Yeah. I mean, parenting is hard work. Yeah. Um, it's tough. Mm -hmm. um, and I got two kids and I got sure. two wonderful kids. I love it. But I'm telling you now, it ain't all about the chocolate. <laughs> it's not about the chocolate. It's in, we use treats to reward our kids sometimes, but it's all about the heart connection. It comes back to understanding how to show your kids you love them, your energy, and having that strong spine which says, no, it's time to turn your lights out now, darling. Come on. And not, again, not screaming and shouting, but in a soft, strong, firm, calm, clear way. Come on, brush your teeth, jump back into bed, and I'll tuck you up. It's time for lights out. Would you say that it just, it builds that bond, and once that bond is built, they'll follow you anywhere? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's the respect they have that, you know, same as that first teacher that might be a, an older lady who's just not got the physical strength of the young man down the corridor, but they know she is a wise lady who really does know what's going on. And so they trust her. That, And then, of course, there's all sorts of good things happen because, because of that trust, she's able to take them outside and take them on field trips because... She trusts them, they trust her, and it's the same with the dog. Once you know, the dog realizes, oh, he really does look after. He is going to feed me. He is going to let me off the leash. You know, when I call him, he doesn't just smack me and put me back on the lead. He just gives me a treat and says, well done, go again. Yeah. Then yeah. it gets better and better and better. But once you start with the treats and it's all about the treats, I've, mm -hmm. they only get you so far. Bribery and corruption is, is not as powerful as... <laughs> Yeah, as having their mind for sure. As, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I do have a dog that's just wildly food motivated, but when I get her out walking, it's different. It, it is the food doesn't matter. So I get what you mean by you have to have their mind, you have to have their bond, you have to have their love. Yeah, and look, if you've got a dog who's wildly food motivated, and I've got a couple. Again, like I said, I'm not saying don't use food ever, yeah. but the food is still the icing on yeah. the cake. Yeah. your your, your yeah. food people have this food and it's like the cake yeah but it, but think of it as like the icing if you've got no cake underneath it when the real pressure hits the fan when the pressure comes on that cake will collapse because you don't actually have a cake you've just got this food thing going on which looks great in eat but once the pressure's on the dog's like no no i'm not i don't because what happens is the dogs actually say no this is beyond food now this is serious and I'm going to ignore that food because I've got to, I have to go and deal with what's going on here or you don't understand. This is a real big problem yeah. and they just switch off. It's like, this is life and death says the dog. And yeah. 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 And after you've trained thousands of dogs, has there ever been one that you haven't been able to bring back into training or actually in train the person? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Lots, to be honest. And that's not to say the method doesn't work. That's just the sad situation and state. I say lots. I don't want to you think it's most of dogs. But, you know, when you work with thousands of dogs, there are, a, you know, again and again, you just come up and go, there's just no way. This, It's to do with the person and the person's situation, and you bring it all together. 
if you have a 80 or 90 pound puppy nine nine months old and they're, they're weighing 90 pounds and it's a single parent and they've got three or four children and they don't have much money and this dog is out of control and there's no time to walk the dog in fact the person can hardly control the dog and they don't have a fence for the back garden and it's just yeah. whoa that's full on that yeah. is full on and what we really need there is the dog to be you know some serious training and it could be done by the owners if they had the yeah. the time and the money and the facilities mm -hmm. or somebody could come in and help them but uh you know there's only so much you can do in that situation and sometimes it is better that you know somebody says hey this is a, yeah. a bit off more than i can chew to be honest for, for now yeah yeah i knew a man named joe years ago and he specialized in rehoming dogs Yes, He could recognize that that dog wasn't in the right place or somebody would let him know that that dog isn't in the right place and he would rehome them. And it's not that they couldn't have a dog in their home. They didn't have the right dog in their home. Yeah, and, uh, exactly, exactly. They, there wasn't a good match there. And I think it's very, very, I don't know what the word is, wonderful or humbling that you're honest about it, that there are some dogs that the right situations weren't for and you couldn't. You couldn't 100 percent change that yeah yeah i mean it's nice you know the ego can get in the way and you want to be you want to see yourself as the wizard of oz who just yeah. turns up and yeah. that's not reality i mean it's yeah. very similar to children nearly all the time it's the same as kids you can't turn yeah. up at somebody's house for two hours and expect every relationship to be perfect yeah. after you've graced them with your presence mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't work <laughs> like that yeah, I've even had dogs that haven't liked me, and that it just wasn't the fit. So I, yeah, yeah I totally some dogs, understand that. Some dogs, I don't really bond with that well either. They're not, we're not a match, mm -hmm. not as well as some do other dogs, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, and being a trainer, you've done a lot of fun things. You've written a book. I think it's a, it's a wonderful. Uh, a, does that cover your philosophy? Because you do kind of put it over to it teaching you to be a better parent. It, it's very much the energetics behind the training. So if you're wanting, if you've got a dog and you really want to get the basics of how, what is this philosophy? What is the basics? Then my website is called theonlinedogtrainer.com. And that's where very clearly, very simply, in a couple of hours, you can have this method down pat. Um, the dog calming code is the foundation program you put in place. And that's kind of what I deliver with with every single dog i went to to visit over you know more than a decade this the dog common code is exactly what they needed so i can put my hand on heart and say i can guarantee you whatever the problem is with your dog whether it's a dog who's chewing through wires and they shouldn't be or a dog who's peeing on the you know couch just for fun or a dog who's been aggressive to other dogs or not coming when called the dog common codes the foundation from there though there's a and then there's a lot of other training videos you can put in place and puppy stuff but from there if you really want to go deeper and understand what's really going on with the energetics between owner and dog and the when i say energetic you can feel and it's the way you do it rather than what you do and and the way you do stuff, even us talking now, you're not, you know, you're you're feeling what I'm saying, and I can feel you're feeling it. That's the energetics, and that goes on between your hu husband and wife, between parents and children, dog owners or dog parents and dogs, in business. You know, you walk in a room, and the second you meet someone, the energetics are there. Yeah, is this person trying to dominate me? Are they? trying to outwit me are they mm -hmm. looking at me sideways you're feeling it all yeah and so the, the the book what the dogs taught me about being a parent is all yeah it's about more about the energetics that goes on between the dogs and the human and yeah and so if i understand you there's a base that you that you learn that you teach to people like me who would then apply yeah. that to the dog and then we would yeah. go probably on problems 
Yeah, exactly. So the Dog Calming Code is the foundation program. And let me give you a bit of a, a, an idea. I don't like to go into it. The reason sure. being is when I go into it, people kind of go, oh, yeah, I kind of know that. Well, I know that uh, now. So now yeah. I've got it. Yeah. And trust me, no, the devil is in the detail. So it's almost like because you know one step, two step that you didn't know before, you think you know it all. You don't realize there's one step, two step, three step, four step, five step. And if you've got a smart dog, your dog knows all five. Yeah. So you have to know it all yeah. because your dog will outwit you. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people who go, I know all this, I know it all. I thought I knew it all until I realized now these smart dogs know way more. And if you've got a smart dog or a determined dog or a stubborn dog mm -hmm. or a high energy dog or a dog who just likes to try and out, they will, they will push you to that nth degree. So it's almost like if you've got a, a student, a grade student, you can't be a, a B plus yeah. as an owner. You've got to be the A plus. Your dog has got to look at you and go, wow. Now you've got my attention. Now I'll trust you. Just like the teacher in the classroom who yeah. the child goes, I don't have to do so-and-so. And the teacher replies, well, that's fine. We'll do this. And, the, and everyone in the class goes, oh, wow. Uh -huh. Good answer. She's got him. Yeah. And, and then he, if you're having them. troubles with your dog yes. and, and they, they take your class, is for me it feels like that it's, you know, your class with some commitment will solve a whole lot of problems, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're dealing with the cause of the issue. This is what I love about it. We ain't sticking no Band-Aid over the top yeah. with a piece of chocolate or a shock collar. We're dealing with the real underlying cause. And the reason it's called the dog calming code is because when you put this in place, you'll see your dog is a yeah. far happier, more relaxed, calm dog. Because we've yeah. dealt with the energetic kind of situation of you know, here, here's another situation which people don't realize. Most dogs are a little, or a lot of dogs, I should say, are a little bit kind of stressed in certain yeah. situations because it's almost like at a dinner party when it's your, when you're the host, when you're in charge, yeah. because all of this comes back to who's in charge. When the dogs think they're in charge and they're running around, you know, you have these little dogs often or big dogs running around, chasing their tails, barking, you know, yapping. Someone's at the door, yap, yap, yap. They're always alert, always watching, always on guard. Maybe it's when they're outside on the walk, they're running around, stressed, panting, looking, charging, running over to other dogs. Every dog they run over and sniff them or, you know, it's all because they have this responsibility. They're not saying, well, you take care of it, you deal with it and chilling out. But when you say to your dog, I'm in charge, the dog switches off, relaxes. A bit like at a dinner party when you're the host, you don't sit down when it's your party and, sit down with your wine and a magazine and just read and chat to your friends. No, it's your your dinner party. You're up serving nibbles, more drinks, more wine. You know, you see people wiping services down at the party. They get the broom out and start sweeping. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's my party. I'm sweeping the floor. Yeah. Why? Oh, I can't switch off. I've got to do something. So when it's your responsibility and you feel this pressure, you you kind of, the dogs are the same. They go looking for stuff to do and they can't switch off. But they don't want that responsibility, really. Yeah. I, I love how you described, to me, what seems like it's done with love. It is not done with uh, a, well, a human aggression. It is not done with punishment. Yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, it's like with my children. I explain to them why we're doing what we're doing and they mm -hmm. get it and I might put them in timeout but even if I use timeout and put them in their bedroom it's done with love it's done mm -hmm. calmly I don't get my child and grab him by the collar and mm -hmm. I don't throw Stanley my son in timeout and say you know we had an example where my Stanley was sticking his fingers in my daughter Sage's face when she was trying to eat her food you know we're talking six sure. seven years old yeah. you know what you do Kids. she's trying to eat her food and he's sticking his fingers there and twinkle twinkle little star <laughs> She said, Stay, stop that. And I said, Stanny, can you stop that, darling? Yeah. Did it again. I said, Stanny, please stop that or I'll put you in timeout. That's second warning. Mm -hmm. And he did it again. I said, Stanny, if you do that again, I'm going to put you in timeout in your bedroom, darling. And he did it again. So I said, Come on, lovey, in your bedroom. In you go. Just wait there for five, ten minutes. And came in five minutes later. He sat there. But I closed the door very quietly. And then I sat down and said, Stanny, you understand why daddy put you in here? Because what will happen if you keep doing that? He says, She'll probably mess her face up or get food on her clothes or I might poke her in the eye or she'll get angry. I said, that's right. Yeah. 
So are you all right to stop doing that now? Yep, sure. Came out, sat down, no problem. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. It's this. It's how we do stuff. You don't have to be screaming and shouting and smacking the dog and getting angry when you understand. Like, so, sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, it's like my mom used to say, catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Yeah, exactly. It, it's it's exactly like that. We, You know, I think of that story of the wind blowing, saying I'll blow the man's jacket off his back. And the man just hangs on tighter and tighter. And then the sun comes out and shines and the man takes the jacket off. That's, that's exactly what it's like. So that's why I'm so passionate about it, because I feel it's made me a better man, a better person. I have a better connection with my dog, other people's dogs. I'm happier. I'm prouder of who I be. Yeah. Because I know at the deepest level, it comes from a place of love and strength. And that's why I really want to share this. And um, so I, if I can give you, I said I'd give you one tip. Yeah, okay. And this, this yeah. tip is to do with, um, it's part of the dog calming code, which is all about how do you calm the dog down? And you do it by basically saying, I'm in charge. Uh -huh. you know, and when I say in charge, you could use the word pack leader. It's a bit on PC now. But at the end of the day, when I say pack leader, it's basically my wife and I are the pack leaders in our house. Yeah. My wife and I, we run the show. Ultimately, we're yeah. in charge, not the dogs, yeah. not our children. We make the rules and basically say, sure. this is how it is. And we don't hit them. Being the pack leader is just, we're just leaders of a group of beings, whether yeah. they be four-legged or two-legged. Yeah. So one of the ways, one of the biggest mistakes people make is by leaving food down. Yeah. If you leave food down for the dogs, you're instantly creating an, a real problem. Yeah. Huge. But people, so many people don't know that. They think their dog's just a grazer. Yeah. No, no. They're controlling <laughs> the food. And if you let your dog control yeah. the food, you're in dog. Yeah. And so this is, again, where, you know, I could I could kind of start going into it, but there's so much just to do with food. I could write a book yeah. on how to feed your dog. Not what to feed your dog, yeah. but how to do it. Because if you get this bit right or wrong, probably wrong's a better example, it's game over. You can't come back from it. And um, I would so, yeah, it's basically you feed the dog. If the dog yeah. doesn't need it, pick it up. But there's a lot more to it than just that because the dog will play all sorts of games and tricks. Absolutely. I would say I, I agree with that 100%. Of all the dogs I've taken care of as a pet sitter or even a dog walker, of the pets that I have fed, they gobble their food, whether, you know, whether that's a good or a bad thing, but they're done with their food and they have that time. They are the better behaved pets that I've taken care of. They really are. I totally oh, yeah. agree that that's a, you know, that's a, you know, that's a good thing about the who's in charge and you're taking care of them. Yeah. I mean, those dogs that don't eat all their food straight away, that's because they're used to not having it taken away. They're used to yeah. grazing and they yeah. will be the worst ones. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. I have one I of often, those. <laughs> I often think, um, if you think of the food as a bit like, I mean, the food basically is what keeps your dog alive. Yeah. So we've lost that understanding. Food is life and death yeah. to a dog. We see it as kind of just a little bit of a fun treat thing. You might love sure. meals out and sort of like a, a bonus. It's a perk. It's a, we, we forget it's actually life and death. Just we have so much food around. It's not life and death anymore because there's always bread. You can always find a loaf of bread, generally speaking. Uh -huh. Not in the wild, not for these dogs. They're literally... So you almost become like the provider. You prov yeah. you become life and death to them. And and but if you give a pile of food and just keep filling up the bowl, then that's they don't see you like that. And with the canine brain, they they live in the now. They don't think about last week. They don't think about next week. You know, I I totally I agree with you there. It's it's a powerful way that we as humans don't think. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The the food, the other way of looking at it is food is like money. You know, we it's another analogy you could say. So if you wanted to really muck up your child, try giving them a hundred bucks every morning before they go to school and watch what happens. <laughs> That'll the, oh, you'll create some real problems there. Yeah. Because they have way too much power control, you know, more than they should have. You know, whether they start buying stuff they shouldn't or getting bribed or getting bullied or whatever, but or just thinking they don't need to do what you say because they've got everything they want. But, yeah. you know, it's just not cool. It's not good. Yeah. And uh, giving the dogs all that food is, it becomes real messy real quick. I had one um, 
but the dogs know this, so they will play games. So if I can share one quick story. Yes, please. The um, I still remember it. The dog, dog always had food on the ground. I said, no, we'll feed him and pick it up. So we put the food down. He didn't eat it, picked it up. Now he immediately starts barking at the bowl, which was kind of three, four foot up on the couch, on the on the bench. You know, row, 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 row. and the lady said, oh, he's starving. He wants his food now. He wants it. I said, no, no, no. He's just saying, put it down. She said, no, no, he's really upsetting. It's really hurting. You know, it was hurting her feelings. She was really upset because yeah. her dog wanted the food. I said, no, we don't do that. Not Not till this evening. We'll put the food away. Anyway, finally, she was so upset she couldn't concentrate. So we agreed we'd put the food down one more time. I said, if he eats it, fine this time, but never again. You know, this is his last time of having the food put down. Well, we put the food down on the ground because he, he, he hadn't stopped barking for 20 minutes. We put the food down, took one sniff of it, looked it, walked away and lay down on his bed. It was oh. like, yeah, you put that food back where I want it to be. It's yeah. He's still playing the game. Yeah. They're beautiful that's animals. A, but, uh, yeah, that's a good example. They are different than us. They are not little people. Yeah. We could treat them like that, that we are the well, pack leaders, but they they, uh, they are canines. They are canines. They are different, and they do do things which still links them back to being, you know, they can breed with wolves. I believe they still, they, they came from wolves. You only, you know, I, we live on a big property. We go wandering through the woods here, and and sometimes, you know, I I go for a pee on a tree, and you know, instantly my two male dogs are there peeing as high as they can on the tree next to me. It's like, oh gosh, <laughs> you know, we we just, you know, we don't do that as 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 men. You don't all try and pee on the same tree and mark over the top of each other. But that comes back if you understand the wolves yeah. and the wolf pack. They yeah. mark their territory. And the males especially will mark these trees exactly where the line is. And our dogs, they just see you doing it. And they go, yep, I can help. Is this the, is this the boundary? I'll help. Yeah. They do so, follow that way. Yeah. And so if somebody needs help and, with yeah. their dog and they're just, they, they totally agree that it should be done with love, not with mm. the hand. No, in, yeah. no good way. Do they go to your site? How do they, where would they start? Sure. So go to the website, the online dog trainer.com. So the online dog trainer.com is the website. And from there, you, to be honest, it doesn't matter. There's lots of, there's lots of, it basically says to you, have you got um, behavioral issues with your puppy or dog running away or barking or, and the, and it just says start the program and there's a $1 trial and you get inside the membership site. So I want you to try it for a dollar before you actually pay yeah. the monthly fee of 37 bucks. Mm -hmm. And during that $1 trial for three days. So you get three days and you know, a lot of people, they cancel during the $1 trial and we say, well, you know, is everything okay? Did it work? They actually reply. We know how many okay. say this because they reply, yeah, it solved the problem. That's why I canceled. <laughs> they don't need it anymore. Good. They don't need it. So that's how fast it can sometimes work. And of course, if you've got a puppy, there's a full puppy training program. Yeah. So those people always stay on a lot longer because their puppy's changing. They want to get it right. They see the value in the investment of maybe joining for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, sorry. Um, and there is a deal, you know, that you can join for a year at a very discounted rate or six months. But yeah, just go in there. Check it out for a dollar, have a look, put it in place, and then decide if you want to stay on. And you'll see there's there's a lot of, you know, I've put all my heart, passion, love into the site. And I've deliberately made it so it's not kind of, uh, you know, bait and switch. It's not a, here's, here's what you think you're going to get, and then when you get in, it's not all there. No, it's all there. I'm not, there are some other things which you can buy if you want. Yeah. But that's more like if you want to become a dog trainer, yeah. something totally different. But in terms of is the solution to barking in the car in there? Yes. Is the recall solution? Yes. If I've got a dog who's got separation anxiety in there, is that solved? Yes. Pulling on the leash, all covered. Just general disobedience, command training, it's all in there for a dollar. So there's way more information than you could ever watch in three days, to be honest. It's... So you love dogs. So you, yeah. you get that, you go through it. I love dogs. Is there a part where I can learn to be a trainer? Yes. Yeah, so it's a separate site, but they link together. But for those people who, you see a lot of people do do this program. Their dog is transformed and they literally go, I 
love this. This is what I've been looking for my whole life. I've wanted to connect with animals, dogs. I want to share this. A lot of people are doing it not so much for the money. They just they're just enthralled and they want to watch they want to see exactly what I do in consults. So I put together a training program called dogtraineracademy.org. Um and that's where, you know, we've got over 150 maybe trainers now around the world. Um and 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 incredibly successful because they've just watched me in consults from start to finish. So I filmed, you know, 30, 40 consults of me going into people's houses with the cameras behind me rolling. And from the very first second I meet the people to when I wave goodbye, you can see the change in the dogs, the happy people. You can see exactly what I've done. And it's very easy to replicate. So people have gone after five or ten. They've gone, I could do this. And they do it. And there's a lady in Utah called uh, Cindy Christensen. She's um, let's train your dog dot com. She's earning over a quarter of a million US dollars a year training dogs. That's awesome. And yeah, she'd never are... trained a dog in her life before the program. Oh, cause dog, if dogs are your passion, you can do it for the money. And it's good to make money at your passion. Absolutely. And she's a genius. Yeah. She she actually said to me, this is only like whatever, however many years ago when she started my program, she says, I'm going to be your number one student. <laughs> I'm going to do everything and follow everything you say and put it in place. And she did. And... You know, I'll be honest, I'm so proud of her yeah. because she trusted me. She she followed the program and now she's helping hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dogs. And she's a good person. She's a yeah. she's got a good heart, a big heart, and um, she deserves all the success she's getting. And yeah, yeah. good on her. She trusted you. And I think that is, you know, what we want to do. We want to trust people so that we can build these amazing relationships with our dogs. Yeah. What I really like about you and what I found on your website is you give back uh, to the community, to the dog community. There are three charities on that, the Happy Trails, the Big Fix, and Soy Dogs. Tell us a little bit about one if you'd like to. Sure. So the, I guess the Big Fix is a beautiful charity for me. It's, um, what, what that organization does is it's, it's based over in Uganda, and it looks at the you know, there's been some terrible wars all around the world, but in Uganda recently there's been some big wars and there's been a lot of victims, you know, men suffering from PTSD um, and women who are the, you know, born the brunt of a lot of the brutality and seen a lot of the brutality. And, and they struggle to trust humans after what they've seen, what they've had to go through. And so this organization has realized that they can connect with dogs in a very deep, beautiful way. And the dogs need help because they basically are wild and some of them are starving and need a bit of veterinary care. So this this organization matches the dogs and the owners uh, or, or the, you know, the, the people who are struggling. And they just need a little bit of guidance and help. So the dogs are helping the, the people who are survivors of war. And the survivors of war are starting to trust the animals again. And it's really beautiful. And what I love especially about it is they don't have a lot of money yeah. so the money you do give goes a long long way and every dollar seems to be accounted for you know the accounting there is incredible it basically shows you this is how much we spent on pens paper yeah you know, this is the building costs this is the salaries this is the dog food this is the dog bandages mm. and you literally go wow so if i give 20 30 dollars it's going to go a long way it's going to save dogs so i love contributing there and there's another charity called um, a guy named Sean McCormack, who's in. Uh, uh, he's over in in East Asia, you know, the rescue, and um, he he worked in in Taiwan with a rescue center. And Sean McCormack does some great work rescuing the dogs off the streets there. Often they've been caught in traps, but there's videos of him. You know, he climbs. He's climbed a mountain. I think it was. A four-hour journey, five-hour journey up a mountain to to rescue a dog who'd had its leg caught in a trap, and a four or five-hour journey down, and you know walked for ten hours to find this dog, yeah. and they found it hidden, and got it down that day and rescued it. Some beautiful yeah. man, beautiful charities, and it's just lovely to be able to give something back to those charities. Yeah, because dogs give us so much; they really, really do. 
And uh, any last words for us? No, other than thank you. And um, if anyone's listening, wondering what they should do, then yeah, I set the one dollar trial up for a reason, so yeah. you can literally check it out. Try before you buy. We don't get the dollar, but um, that's all good. The dollar goes to the the banking system that we use to to process it. But just check it out. Check it out for three days. I don't mind if you stay on or not. I really don't. I know you'll get a lot out of it, and it's great for puppy training as well. If you've got a young puppy complete program there called project moses which is again it's all included and that program in itself is huge it videos moses my puppy from eight weeks through to eight months all the stuff you could imagine not just the the commands but also yeah yeah, how to get him to walk alongside the road and how to get him to swim and enjoy water and how to socialize him all that stuff they should also go look for your podcast doggy dan has a podcast yeah, I got my own podcast. So when you go to theonlinedogtrainer.com, it has links at the top to want to become a dog trainer, blog posts, podcasts. Yeah, everything's, everything's there. there. It's it's yeah. extensive. It's a great website. There's so much there uh, to find out about you, your process. You can do that dollar. I think that's that's really good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for three yeah. days to find out what you're getting. I think that's yeah. that is that is really Check wonderful. It. Thank you so much for being with us today. I appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show, Christina. I appreciate it too. Have a have a beautiful day. <laughs> <laughs>